Hey guys, today we're going to launch a new video series. We're going to look at smart home projects. We're going to look at things that I'm doing specifically in my smart home and I'm going to be documenting them for your benefit. Today we're going to start with controlling TVs. I'm going to talk to you about what actually I've been doing about it and what you can do to control your TVs in Home Assistant. If you're brand new to Home Assistant, there's a link in the description down below for my free Home Assistant course. But first, let's roll the intro. Back in October, I purchased a new TV, a new LG C2 TV. So that went into the living room and I moved the TV that was originally in the living room down in the kitchen. So I had a bit of work to do. Let me actually talk you through how we set up these things from scratch. First of all, go to Home Assistant Integrations. In here, search for the TV brand that you have purchased or you're about to purchase. So for example, if we go with LG, you can see we have LG Web OS Smart TV is the integration that you're going to need to use. I've also got a Samsung and you can use Samsung Smart TV, but you have several other brands like Sony and many more. In Home Assistant, go to your settings and navigate to your devices and services. Now you might have it already popping up in, in the discovery mode and you can just click configure. If you don't have it, you can click on add integration button and then just search again. So for LG, you would search LG and then you can get it set up. It will ask you for an IP address. So you're going to need to know how to get that. I'm in the Unify networking ecosystem, but you can log into your router. Normally it would be 192.168.1.1 or the 1.2 and the login details and passwords will be behind your router. At that point, you can actually find your IP address. In alternative, if you're struggling in this way of doing it, you can actually go to your TV network settings and you normally are able to actually what's the IP address of that TV. Now, at this stage, I would also advise you to use a fixed IP, either by doing it on the router. So I can click here, for example, go to settings and set a fixed IP address, or you can do it in on the TV end. Just bear in mind that if you do do it on a TV, first of all, you have to ensure that the IP address that a TV is gonna use is not conflicting with another device. Also, if you change your networking one day and you decide to change VLANs, then you're gonna to need to reconfigure your TV again. But if you're really stuck and you want to get this done quickly, you can just do it in the TV if you want to. I can show you how this actually looks. So for the LG, I have one device. So I click on device, I see my entity over here and there are various automations that you can create that are linked to this device. Click on the entity itself and you can see this power on, power off button. So you can click power on and power off. You can see the source coming up. So you can pick Apple or whatever you've called your sources. So you can see I can pick and choose and change the uh, sources. I can change actually the sound on the bar. Now I'm using a Sonos Play Bass, so this won't actually work in my example. In fact, if I try to mute, it gives me an error message. This might be something that I might look at improving in the future if there's a workaround. But I seldomly use this page because you were just using a dashboard. And then you can do your play, pause, stop, let me show you the Samsung. Let me show you Samsung integration now. You can see it's got similar, uh, has a similar interface as an on and off button. You can see last time that it was updated. And you can see we have different sources this time because the device is different. So when you're doing your automations and you're picking, for example, Netflix, and you wanna launch something, you wanna type it in exactly in the same way that it's written here. Now, if you're actually struggling turning your TV on, you might probably be okay by turning the TV off, but if you're trying to turn the TV on, you probably need to do a couple of more steps. This involves something called Wake on LAN. To actually configure this, we need to go to our configuration.yaml for those of you that love, love YAML. You're gonna need an add-on, file editor, or Visual Studio Code to get to this. So you're going to need Wake on LAN, like you see at line 26, and we're gonna to need to set some switches. These switches are gonna allow us to turn on and turn off the TV. So we can configure this Wake on LAN platform. We're going to need a MAC address, which we're gonna talk about what that is. We want to name it, and then you need this turn off section. So this turn off section will enable the actual switch in the dashboard to turn off 
even if you're still able to do that. In fact, we're using the media player dot turn underscore off to turn off, but we're actually using the switch platform to turn on. So this get, could be a little bit confusing if you're just starting out in Home Assistant, but that's why you need to integrate your device first because you gotta get your media player entity ID. And I would suggest if you haven't renamed it, rename it at this stage so you know you've got it ready for the future. Let's touch upon that. Before we touch upon the MAC address, one more thing I wanna point out, because I have two TVs, I have this section of the code uh, duplicated. So if you have only one, you will have basically only uh, this line over here. There are more optional parameters that you can set, like the customizable sources and other things, but this is like the bulk of what you need. So for the MAC address, the way I get it is again from my router and I get the MAC address right here, right at the top, but you can uh, see if you can get it in the same way that you got your IP address from your TV, depends on your TV model. So um, hopefully you can get your MAC address because you do need your MAC address for this part of the project. So go to the cogwheel and restart Home Assistant and then we should have these two switches in our developer tools. So you can see here the wake on LAN with a friendly name as kitchen TV switch is currently set as on because the TV is on. So that's working really well. Now let me give you some examples of something that you can actually achieve. I've configured my main tablet where I've got my fire tablet wall panel set up. Configured over here, so I added temporarily uh, a media player just to test out a few things. But I've also got these little tiles to uh, signify different channels that I want to pre-configure so you can have the setup any way you want. So if I go edit this grid card and I go to the second tab over here, I'm simply just using the standard media controller, media controller, um, and I'm adding like a little theme just to make it a little bit more visually appealing. There's the custom mini media player, which requires HACX, which is hacks. So let's look at those tiles at the bottom. The tiles at the bottom are basically a series of, and I'll show you the code behind it, a series of picture cards and then each picture card has an image. So I have uploaded this image in the www folder. If you haven't got it, you need to create that first. And then that is basically slash local. And then I gave this a name. I've created these in the same format. So I think they're 500 by 500 if I'm not wrong. And then what you just do is basically you create some script that lives behind these so that you can actually turn things on off. And then if I hold the button, that will mean that I will turn the TV off. So each button is pretty much similar. It's just got a different image and a different script and they work in the same way. That means that I can tap on the Netflix button, for example, and go straight to the TV. Everything can turn on, turn on exactly as you want. But obviously it's not just limited to the TV. In a script you can do anything. So you can um, turn lights off, do everything basically like a movie night um, script and it's, it's all gonna work really well. To actually create a script, go to your automations and scenes. As you can see, automations, scenes and scripts and blueprints fall under this menu. And the scripts are the third one. See over here, some of the scripts that I created already. You can see how this actually works. So you can see the switch turn on is turning on that switch that we created with the wake on lamp. So it's pretty straightforward. Just pick switch turn underscore on, choose entity, and that's done. Then you need to add an action and that will give you the second thing in the sequence. So I'm just delaying for five seconds because I'm allowing um, basically the TV to boot, that boot time of the TV and for it to change sources. So tailor this, experiment a little bit, maybe one second, five seconds, 10 seconds. But um, I'm adding that in so I'm sure this actually works. There are other ways of doing this, probably using like maybe a wait until action, which I might like look at uh, improving and then you go to your select source, so for example, your Samsung, whatever TV it is, you pick it, you pick your source name, so you call this HDMI 1, 2, whatever it is. And once that's done, that's done, right? So at that point, if you have a device like an Apple TV or something else, you want to do something else specific to that device, you can click add action at the bottom and you can go call service and then you can say something like remote dot send command, and then you can pick, for example, an Apple TV remote, 
right? And then you can send some sort of command, hold, delay. So you can do basically anything that you want. So what I will do, I would suggest that you, when you build this script, you build it one step at a time until you've got the complete sequence of events. Try to do it not just from it turned on, but also turned uh, off so you can simulate if they both work. Next Monday, I'm gonna be publishing my next video where I'm gonna show you five automations that I will be creating this week with my televisions to show you how you can use them as a notification hub, but also using the television as a trigger for other automations like dimming lights and doing other cool things in Home Assistant. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that video. If the video is already published, you're gonna see it appearing over here. Like this video if you enjoyed it and let me know in the comment section down below what else I should be doing next with my TVs or other smart home projects. See you in the next one. Ciao.